Hi there, I'm Christopher Dunnigan. This is HandmadeInVermont.com and today we're talking about the Hubbardton Forge Pluto table lamp. This is going to be the 274120. I have it right here. A lot of detail, so let's jump in. Let's talk about the size of it to begin with. It's 19.3 inches high and that's going to be from the table to the very top right here. And then it is 8 inches wide. And that's really this part of it from the front to the back. And then the width of it, or the depth of it, you're going to call, would be 9.1. That's going to be a metal to glass measurement on this side. The base down below is 7.5 inches. And that's really about it for that. Glass is 7.34 inches high, 8.3 inches in diameter. I have uh, the smaller one from the floor lamp here because I want to show you what opal glass is like versus the clear glass, and we'll get into that in just a second. So let's talk about a couple things. Let's talk about, um, it's got a cool rheostat, which is an on-off dimmer switch. So watch this, look at that, and you'll hear a little clicking. So it's on and off. And I'm going to take the glass off. And one way to show you what I'm doing is to look at the installation's instructions. So if you're on the page for this on Handmade in Vermont, look over on that side of the screen. Midway down, you're going to see a link. It's going to say, click here for installation's instructions PDF. So open that up for me. It's going to show you a full parts list. It's going to show you how all the things go together. There's a little metal part on the tops of these that are going to be going into this thing. I'll show you in a second, and it's easy to put those on. And how to put the glass on, too, is really just tilting it over the bulb. So we're actually going to take this all off now and show you how to do that. So the little knob on top is going to unscrew. And that's going to loosen that bottom part so it drops down. Make sure you're holding the glass so you don't drop it. Just tilt it a little bit, and it goes right over the bulb. So that's that. Let's talk about the socket. And I'm going to talk about this kind of funky bulb I have right now. Most people don't use these. I, I tend to think this is kind of a cool bulb. I used them in different places. It has a, um, a kind of a foil top on it. It focuses light down. A lot of you aren't going to be using it for this lamp for that kind of reason, getting light down. You want light to go all over the place. So you're going to be most likely using other types of bulbs, but I just happen to have this in here now. And uses a regular base. So this is a medium base socket. Okay, it's a porcelain socket. It's going to take just a good old-fashioned, what's called an A19 bulb. A19 bulbs are the size of a standard light bulb we all grew up with and just screws in without any problem at all. A19 bulbs also come in all kinds of different types and you'll notice that you're limited to an LED on this fixture and the reason why is because you don't want to build up heat inside the glass basically and that's, that's that. So let's put this back on and I'm going to be using what's called a phosphorus LED. This is probably a 40 watt equivalent if, I, if I'm pretty right on that. This is an A19. You can use a smaller bulb if you want to. This is an A15. I wouldn't bother with that. I would just go for the A19. You can get these everywhere. My local hardware store has them. You can get them at Home Depot. I actually buy them quite often at Walmart because I think they have a pretty good selection of light bulbs, including their house brand. So let's kind of get this going again. Remember, this is clear glass, so you're going to be able to see what's going on inside. Most people are going to be using a decorative light bulb. And, oops. I guess that bulb doesn't work. Let's try this again. Or maybe, you know what? I don't think I put it in correct. Hold on. Let's try it again. You know, a little pilot error here. So, no, nope, I guess this is a bulb that doesn't work anyway. That's probably why I have it as a prop. Well, let's try another one. So, this is a bulb that I expect you not to use with this glass because I don't find these very attractive at all. But they, they do the job. And where I would expect you to use this bulb would be if you're using the opal glass, which is an opaque glass, so you're not going to be able to see it. Remember, this is for the floor lamp, which has two of them. That's why it's smaller. But if we put this guy on, and you put that back through again, there's a hole at the top. Screw this guy on. Don't go too tight on this because the, you don't want to break anything. And, okay, very bright. And that's probably a 100-watt equivalent, I bet in that one. And, you know, there's quite a bit of space on this. Even though it says, you know, you're supposed to only use an A19, I think there would be enough space inside of this to put an A20. The only thing you're going to run into is getting the glass on and off because an A20 is going to be a bigger bulb. So let's put all these kind of things back together again. Put that back together again. Put this back together again. I think this is a great light that you could use bedside. You could all for reading. It's a good, good reading light because you can put a hundred watt equivalent uh, LED in this if you want to. You know the interesting thing is I was um, 
kind of researching before the video about what is a 10 watt, and that's the max Hubbardton Forge says you can put in this for an LED, a 10 watt uh, equivalent LED. And I got a couple different results online. So one of them said it was a 60 watt uh, incandescent equivalent. It, but when I went to the Home Depot website, they had 100 watt equivalent 10 watt, I think it was actually 9.5 watt, LED bulbs. So you can see they're getting better and better all the time and stronger and stronger using less electricity uh, wattage. Uh, so I, I would probably do either the Home Depot or run over to uh, Walmart or your local true, ver true value hardware store or something like that and pick up um, uh, maybe a 100 watt equivalent bulb. Uh, and then, you know, remember we have a dimmer. So on off dimmer here. Let's talk about the color of light coming out of LEDs. So I tend to like the middle of the road. You'll notice that LEDs come in a 2700 Kelvin. That's like super yellow. They also come super white. And when they talk about the color daylight on LED packs, it sounds like it's a warm light. It's not. That's a very white light in, in the LED world. And that's going to be 4,000, 5,000 Kelvin on that Kelvin scale. And remember, the, the super yellow one is going to be 2,700 Kelvin. Right in the middle of all that is called warm white. And warm white is going to be 3,000 Kelvin. And that's what we use in our showroom. The light coming down on me right here, this is 3,000 Kelvin. This is pretty close to what an incandescent bulb was when I was growing up. It's a nice warm light. It's very crisp. Uh, it's not overly white or blue. And that daylight, that uh, daylight 4,000, 5,000 Kelvin is a blue light. Think overcast sky on an on a overcast day that's kind of bright when you have to wear sunglasses when you're driving, even though it's not sunny because of all that blue light. So that's what that's all about. That 3,000 Kelvin I find to be <clears throat> like that nice middle of the road, like I said before. So it's a warm light. Um, it makes everything nice and crisp, the edges when you look at it. Uh, it's easy to get in these kind of bulbs, remember? And if you use the opaque glass, the opal one, you can use this. You could use either one, but I kind of think this is going to be better when it's hiding. I like this one better when you can see um, through the glass, the opal glass. So that's really about it. Make sure you get a dimmable bulb because you're going to want to dim this down. Probably go for the 100 watt equivalent if you can, and you're good to go. So I want to touch on Hubberton Forge's glass for just a second. Mm -hmm. Hubberton Forge's opal glass is not just another piece of white glass. This is actually hand-blown glass. All of their glass is hand-blown. And to begin with, it's actually a clear piece of glass to start with. And then they come in, they blow a second layer on the inside of white glass. Then they come back and they do a third step where they sandblast the entire outside. So you'll notice when you get these in your hands, they actually have layers of glass on them on the end. You can see them on these two pieces. And it gives it this really soft, uh, semi-transparent, kind of milky quality. It's, it's a soft, soft glowing piece. Really, really pretty. You know, they're really obsessed about details at Hubberton Forge, and a lot of people don't, um, I don't think they appreciate it out in the world, but you appreciate it because that's why you guys are here watching this video. There you go. Let's talk about Let's get into metal finishes now. If you're on our website, handmadeinvermont.com, do me a favor, look over on the left-hand side of the screen. You're going to see a lot of red tabs over there. One is going to be the Finishes Help Guide. When you're done with this video, go over there and open that up for me, and you're going to see a video at the top of that page of me talking to you guys about the differences in Hubberton Forge finishes and how they can look on different types of forging. I'm going to be referencing a color chart just below the video, so scroll down a little bit. You'll see that chart. You'll notice there are pictures that have the letter A on them, pictures that have the letter B on them, and I'm going to be talking about that range you can see in variants on there in that video. So it's really important to watch the video, use that chart. When you're done with all that, come back down to that chart. You can click on any of those pictures and see a lot more samples of Hubbardson Forge fixtures in that finish. If you want to see a bunch of stuff in dark smoke, click on dark smoke. If you want to see a bunch of stuff in vintage platinum, do the same. And so on and so on and so on. That's a great way for you to see a lot of Hubbardson Forge stuff in different finishes and really take advantage of that, okay? So our showroom in Vermont has over 350 Hubbardson Forge fixtures spread across two floors. <clears throat> we have a What's On display page on our website. It's going to be back in the red tabs over there. A lot of good things in that, that section to check out. So when you open that up, you'll see it's all divided up into different sections like uh, dining pendants and outdoor lighting. We're always adding to that. This is the biggest showroom in the world of Hubbardson Forge. They don't even have a showroom like this. Nobody does. And they use this as their showroom when you guys come to Vermont to visit us. So lots and lots to see here. <clears throat> you can see all the different glass, all the different finishes, all the different fabrics, all of those things. In addition to that, we have a clearance center. So the clearance center stuff are returns, discontinued things, and showroom samples. That's an amazing deal for you. If you guys want to take advantage of that, you, gotta, you have to come here to, to Vermont to see us. And when you do, 
do me a favor, measure all the kind of things about your project and what you guys are doing. So the most important thing is measure your ceiling heights to begin with. Measure distances between junction boxes and like windows and ceilings and those kind of things. So we, if you're looking at sconces on the wall, you can see if they're going to fit for you. If you're doing pendants over a kitchen island, measure the distances between those junction boxes. Widths of tables, kitchen tables, dining tables, uh, lengths of tables islands, all that good stuff. <clears throat> and also uh, do a couple more things. If you guys have some tablets or iPads lying around, take pictures of all these things. Take pictures of the, of the kitchen, take pictures of what the projects you're doing. Bring that in so we can kind of go through those pictures together and we'll be able to see what you guys are up to, okay? And also the boxes and clearance stuff, for clearance stuff, are basically uh, packed for shipping. Don't forget, these were supposedly shipped out. So <clears throat> the boxes tend to be on the bigger side, so bring a decent size SUV if you want to take stuff home. It's a really good opportunity for you. When you buy your Hubbardson Forge fixtures from HandmadeInVermont.com, shipping is free to every state except Alaska and Hawaii. There's no tax if we ship out of the state of Vermont. We're the only dealer that offers 90-day returns and no restocking fees. That's three months after you receive something to send it back, and there's no restocking fee on that. Some larger items and custom things, and it's usually going to be big things on pallets are going to be non-returnable. It'll always tell you on the page for uh, an item if that is the case, so always keep an eye out for that. And we also offer a rush program. So to get all these different metal finishes, Hubberton Forge doesn't stock. It, they generally take about three to four weeks to get product out. We can cut that time in half, and it's really, really inexpensive. If you want to know more about that, just drop me a quick email, and I can clue you in on details, okay? So our showroom in Vermont is open every day except Sunday from 11 to 6. I'm here every day except Sunday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. If you want to drop a quick email, you can do that all the time. And that's going to be at sales at handmadeinvermont.com, and we spell out the word Vermont. <clears throat> or you can call me during business hours, 802-446-2400. So thank you for stopping in today, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.